So for two weeks over my summer, I spent time at Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. I took a course on leadership and global health. This course was highly engaging and, and opening to all the different progresses that have occurred in the healthcare field. In this course, we did lots of workshops, we listened to many speakers, and we talked a lot about medical ethics, which really, and we also did um, class discussions, which sparked a lot of debate in, our, in, our, in the students. I would like to share some of my experiences learning about the global health field with you all today by talking about environmental health, child health, and vaccine development. We are here today all with the access to all these advances that a lot of times we don't realize that it was through the pursuit of progress that we now have access to them. I tend to realize all of these progressions as a third culture child with a lot of family members still living in a developing country. I was born in Philadelphia and I like to claim myself that I'm a Philadelphian, although I've never lived there. I lived in Germany, Tunisia, Ghana, and South Africa, but my parents were both born and raised in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone is a country with poor healthcare infrastructure and a lot of progress still needs to be made there. First off, when we look at the progression of healthcare, environmental health is a very big issue. It was something that was not a really big concern to me before I attended my course. Throughout the course and when we did our in-class discussion on environmental health, I realized that environmental health actually has a direct impact on our health. This interest was also furthered as I attended a trip to Huntsman during this past summer as part of the higher level IB biology course requirement. Through this, I was able to see that our ecosystem really has a direct impact on how we treat it. I did a presentation on my course about asbestos and all the harms that it causes and then that it has caused in the environment. This was very eye-opening to me as I was not aware as of how hazardous a work environment can be. Asbestos is a naturally occurring mineral. It was once uplifted and prevalent and it was recognized as having many properties during the Industrial Revolution. All the wonderful abilities that asbestos had were looked at and the harmful effects were not considered at all. As humans, we have to be aware of all the negative and positive impacts to using a product which in the past has not always been the case. The first major health warning was in 1897 when an Austrian doc um, doctor claimed that his patient had a pulmonary, pulmonary issues because of inhalation of asbestos dust. This has led, so over time, a lot of people have realized that asbestos causes mesothelioma cancer, and over the years it has led to a partial ban, um, of, it has led to a partial ban of asbestos. The question here is how do we pursue progress without hurting the economy? Asbestos is very cheap to mine and is very useful, which is why a lot of developing countries currently are using it, although a lot of developed countries now use it less. But on the negative side, asbestos causes many severe health effects. This means that people have to pay to receive more medical attention and more money to be split, put into the healthcare system to prevent um, mesothelioma cancer. The, pers the pursuit of progress of asbestos will depend on how we value, how we value what we value more in our society. Do we value a cheap material or a better health for us? So this is just a picture of, the, that's asbestos and it causes mesothelioma cancer. So another passion of mine, sorry, it's not on a slide, is um, child health care. And this is because, as I mentioned earlier, both my parents were born and raised in a developing country of Sierra Leone, and they gave birth to me and all my family and all my siblings outside of Sierra Leone. And this was because they knew that we'd all receive better health care access if we did not live in, our, in their home of um, Sierra Leone. Um, this raises an uh, important point as in a lot of countries where you're born, a lot of times determines your chance of survival, This, especially looking at child health. This is because there's a lot of um, problems with malnutrition and receiving other basic necessities in the world. From my experiences in school, I do feel as though that people have the perception that this only happens on the African continent, although that is not true. I remember once sitting in lunch in my 7th grade class, our homeroom teacher um, stepped out and one of the students decided to throw out their food because they, were, they weren't hungry. Another student's remark was, don't throw out food, kids in Africa would die to eat that. This statement really angered me and reassured me that there was a negative view at stigmatization on the African continent due to problems within healthcare such as malnutrition. The statement, yes, it was true that um, there are malnutrition issues on the African continent, but no, that's not all the, the only place that this happens. This happens right outside our streets in other developing countries, but no, it, the, African, the continent of Africa is not the only place that that happens. Um, there's much more to the African continent, such as the over 100 ethnic groups, all with different cultures and traditions, and the many minerals to be found there. To counter the stigma, there has been a hashtag on Twitter, which is known as hashtag the Africa. They never show you on TV. You guys can all you should all search this up, and it helps to promote a positive view of the, of the African continent that is much more than all the healthcare issues that a lot of people tend to focus on. This is the progress that has already been taking place. 
Although there needs to be more progress in healthcare, NGOs are working towards do this, to do this. NGOs should also be careful as how they portray working on the African continent and other um, developing healthcare countries, as a lot of times when people come back and portray uh, presentations, which has happened in my previous school, it, it, people tend to narrow mind the view of the continent, and this doesn't help improve um, the view that they see of the African continent, as a lot of people already have a narrow sighted view. Another healthcare region where great progression has also been made is vaccine development. Vaccine development now has a great mission to eradicate diseases, and according to the World Health Organization, eradication refers to the complete and permanent worldwide reduction to zero new cases of a disease through the deliberate efforts. Although some people are completely against vaccines, they are a key step to progressing healthcare. I remember being in my course, and we had this forced choice question, and we asked, and the teacher asked, should all people be vaccinated? This actually stirred a lot of debate in my class, and it was very divisive. There are a lot of students on the side of no, and there were not that many students on the side of yes. To me, that was actually a great surprise, as I thought that more students would be for the vaccine development and helping, encouraging people to get vaccinated, as when one person doesn't get vaccinated in a whole community, it actually affects the whole community, as there's a herd immunity concept, which only works when the most amount of people in a society get vaccinated. And um, a lot of healthcare development and eradication of diseases now use the, are using the herd immunity concept to ensure that the most amount of people are vaccinated to help get rid of diseases. A disease that has been eradicated is small, smallpox. Students of, our, of my generation do not have to get a smallpox vaccine, but most of my parents needed to get one. The World Health Organization actually declared smallpox eradicated in 1977. This was done by ensuring that the small, smallpox vaccine vac was vaccinated to everyone in the world. The next disease that the World Health Organization is looking to eradicate is polio. Polio is still active in Afghanistan and Pakistan, but through continual vaccine encouragement in those two countries, the, disease will soon be eradicated. Developing healthcare needs to happen amongst all countries in the world, although it is a challenge. Some countries have very poor healthcare infrastructure and they do not have the money to support their people. This is evident with malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV, and they're known as the big three diseases. This is because they're diseases of inequality and poverty, and they happen in a lot of countries with a low HDI index. Developed countries have been able to prevent these diseases in their nations, but why hasn't the developing world been able to do the same? This is because um, the developed world has a lot of preventative measures, such as, well, if we look at the case of malaria specifically, there are a lot of malaria nets and malaria pills that uh, developed countries have access to. Developing countries do not have access to these resources, which is why they're still struggling with diseases such as um, malaria. Although the developed world is looking to help remove malaria by um, spending lots of billions of dollars on a um, a malaria vaccine. Currently, GlaxoSmithKline, which is a British um, company, has put millions of dollars looking into a malaria vaccine. I personally think that this is a waste of money because there are many um, preventative measures that have worked, such as when I lived in Ghana, I had to take many malaria pills every morning and evening to ensure that I didn't get malaria, which I didn't. And I just believe that if we continue looking at malaria, if we continue using nets and Pills. This will help to eliminate the malaria, but we just have to ensure that um, those preventative measures that we already have are being actually transported to um, the develop nation, developing nations. As having a, vac a vaccine, we will have to also ensure that it's being sent over, which as we can see, preventative measures currently now are not being sent over, which will be a big question when, if the vaccine is actually um, confirmed. So the main goal of the global health field is to ensure that all countries are working together to improve health issues across all borders. It encourages countries to work together to help solve issues in developing countries and to help improve healthcare on our planet. Hopefully in the future we will have a lot less problems regarding healthcare as we'll see more improvements with vaccinations and infectious diseases eradicated. Thank you.